sniff that. <laughs> Does it really smell? <laughs> That's my everyday holster, dude. Hey guys, um, I'm Mike. I'm Kurt. I was just sniffing my holster. <laughs> See, you're back. <laughs> I love it. Hey guys, we're doing everyday carry considerations today because everyday carry considerations are very important. The first thing I want to do is advertise my free Philcraft Survival mat because this is the start point, I think. It's not free. <laughs> I did say free, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, you did. This one for me is free. Look, this is the EDC mat. Everybody's like, why do you sell a mouse pad? I'm like, bro, it's not a mouse pad. Yeah. But um, it actually is a mouse pad, but we just did some uh, yeah. modifications on it. We put our it. logo on it. We yeah. did some camo on and it. And upselled it. Um, <laughs> but so, look, this is a start point because this is the mindset that you create, right? When you stage your equipment, like we used in special operations, we had a staging room. Yeah. And then what it did is it creates this structure that, hey, every day prior to going on an operation and being in the danger zone, I'm gonna set up the my, highway to the danger zone. The, the highway to the, before <laughs> yeah. I jump on the Autobahn yeah. to the danger zone, I wanna make sure that my mind's right, but all my equipment is laid out. Yeah, it's an organizational process, right? So it's 100%. like having this mat in front of you and sticking your pistol, a light, a tourniquet, and whatever else you uh, would describe in your everyday carry, it's an ability to give uh, somebody the right mindset to stay organized, yeah. both when they uh, start out in the morning and when they come home in the evening, they can put that stuff on this mat. The reason we're talking about the mat because we're going to talk about everything that goes on the mat in everyday considerations. Kurt? Yeah, so everyday carry considerations. I'm going to start off real quick first with different types of handguns. Uh, so my personal favorite is the Glock 43. This pistol is clear right now. Uh, we checked it. Um, just want to make sure that's very clear. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's the Glock 43. The reason why I like this pistol, it's a single stack nine millimeter. It's easy uh, to fit into my waistband when I'm running an appendix carry holster. You got plenty of room in your waistband. <laughs> I do. I'm, plenty of I, space. I, I'm a slim dude. <laughs> I've got abs, you know what I'm saying? So that allows me to have the waist space in my pants oh, yeah. uh, to carry a pistol there. No, but uh, in all seriousness, so hey, there's been a couple concerns or questions that have been asked about this pistol. One of them was the round capacity with the magazine. So stock, it comes with a six round capacity. So what I've done is uh, taken a magazine extender, a plus two, which gives me two more rounds on the magazine. So a total of eight, or if you're carrying one in the chamber, nine. Which you should be. Right. So, uh, and that's made by Strike Industries. That's what I have on the bottom of the magazine. The other thing I like about that, this magazine is clear. Inserting it uh, into the pistol here, it actually allows me to get a full grip on the pistol. So, because you have if, man hands, I do. Uh, if you have bigger hands, it actually allows you to get a good grip on the pistol, which again translates into the fundamentals of marksmanship for grip. I like uh, the Glock 43 because it's single stack too, because it's slim. And when you look at other comparisons to other firearms, like we used to run Glock 17s, That's uh, right. full size, Glock, Glock 22s, 22. which is a 40 cal of that, that are full frame pistols in our waistbands. Some people can get away with that. It depends on the body dimensions of the people. Like nobody right. wants to talk about um, that people are different physically. So, hey, you're gonna be, uh, this leads us off into the conversation about what types of holsters to utilize when carrying these pistols. So, off we go. Yeah, so right now what I'm carrying is actually the Haley, uh, Haley Strategic Incog. Uh, this is a nice holster, it's a Kydex holster, it's got felt on the outside, so it's actually really com comfortable when it sits inside of your waistband. And the actual height uh, of the clip itself, when it clips to the belt, in an appendix carry configuration actually allows the pistol grip to be high enough. So when I actually go to lift my garment, I actually get a good uh, purchase grip or a good master grip on the pistol to be able to come out of the waistband and then do what I have to do with the gun. So uh, this is one that I like a lot. It, the, other, the only other thing uh, with holsters is I actually like the T-Rex sidecar as well which is another holster that I carry. You can see here it's got plastic clips. Same thing, appendix carry, it's kind of form fitted. So that way it sits inside the waistband nicely. And the other thing that it, that it has, which is why it's called the sidecar, is it's actually got a, uh, an extra magazine carrier. So now you're carrying one in the pistol and you've got a backup mag in the sidecar. So super practical, super comfortable, um, makes a lot of sense and it's efficient. I like it. All right, guys, so I'm a minimalist kind of guy. When I was a contractor for the U.S. government for an organization I cannot discuss, I used to carry a full-size Glock 17 in my waistband appendix carry. Look, if you're, a lot of people are intimidated by Glocks because they're single-action pistols that you put one in the chamber, there's only one action, which is pulling the trigger, and it goes boom. You don't want to go boom in your crotch, so you have no. to protect your crotch by utilizing a minimalist holster. 
What I did was protect the crotch. Always protect the crotch. Always protect the crotch. That's an acronym. A P T C. <laughs> a P T C. So hey, look. What I did was I I created a trigger guard for this gun. It has a lanyard system. We call it system. That just sounds better than just lanyard. <laughs> yeah. So you put this into your belt loop, and what it is is when you draw it, it's connected to your belt loop. It pops it off, and then you go to work with the gun. The cool thing about this is. This makes it so everybody's created equal dimensionally, right? If you're a big person or uh, if your dimensions, you have shapes and stuff about you, I think this you're might looking not fit. Pear -shaped. <laughs> if you're pear shaped, <laughs> this might sit too forward or too back and it just might be cumbersome, which isn't a big deal in carrying except for the fact that you don't want to show everybody you're carrying a gun. You don't want to print, you right. don't want to signature uh, the, the fact that you actually do carry. Yeah, so med considerations. One of the big things that we always talk about with everyday carry is making sure that you have the ability to stop a major bleeder. So uh, in special operations, pretty easy. We use the cat tourniquet. Uh, we also use the soft T. And so those are tourniquets that obviously are approved by the special operations community. And so that's obviously what we talk about as well. Several other tourniquets that are out there, the rats and the soft T are available as well. Make sure you do your research about tourniquets. Make sure that they're approved for use and that they'll actually stop a major bleed. But Kurt, how do you wear it? <laughs> yeah, so uh, a couple different opinions here. So I've been asked, we've been asked a lot of different questions about where we EDC a tourniquet. So uh, there's a couple different ways. Obviously the cat like this is a little bit bulky. Um, you could throw it in your pocket if you absolutely had to. Uh, a couple different ways. So you could also rubber band this to your belt line if you wanted to. And then the other thing you can do, uh, if you have a dog, which I think this is kind of cool. It is. Is uh, you can fit a tourniquet inside of a pouch just like this, okay? And I'm just to save time, I'm not gonna zip it up, but this does zip up, all right? And then this could actually go to your dog's harness, so that, that way you've got med equipment with your EDC with your animal. The other thing you can do with it is actually put it on a pack. So what we would tell you is if you do put it in a pack, you wanna have it somewhere accessible, so that way if you need it, you can get to it quickly. Yeah, it's the everyday mobility concept that if you have all this kit that's intended to save your life, it doesn't necessarily have to be on you. Now a pistol, absolutely, because you're defending your life. But if it's something like a bleed, a tourniquet that needs to stop the bleed, it could be readily accessible in a go bag, inside the vehicle, right. inside of something that's close to you your dog, whatever it may be. Another right. version of this is just a wider version that's a molly, a molly on the back that you could utilize. And again, this, this uh, I know guys that, that you do it. You, you have your kids carry this inside their backpacks. I do, yeah. So uh, I've done tourniquet training with both of my daughters. Bam. And it was uh, one thing that I always require them to carry inside of their backpack at school is they've got a cat tourniquet inside of their backpack so that way they know what to do if they encounter some type of mass casualty or some kind of trauma, they can actually stop the bleeding with that tourniquet. Yeah, another thing that we uh, always consider is that you need to carry a light source. Look, a lot of people, uh, I'll be honest, if I, it's during the day, which is 90% of my life in a, as a civilian, if it was, if our old work, our old job, we worked most of the time at night. Right. So we always had light sources on guns. But the reality is you're not gonna be really in and around a lot of spaces EDCing uh, and a lot of places that require a light, right. but you never know. So this is a contingency type of thing, and it depends on who you are. If you're a security car, uh, cop that works- uh, Or you work at night. Yeah, if you yeah. work at night- It's like a common sense thing. So you gotta plan your EDC based off of the things that you do in your life. So yeah. a good example like we're talking about is if you work at night, you probably wanna have an alternate light source or a light source, so that way if something, you know, the worst case scenario happens and you need to illuminate something, you've got a light source. Yeah, my favorite is the Surefire V1. There's a lot of different options. A lot of guys run the lights on guns now because they have the XC1, which is a smaller version. I don't like like the X400. Right. It's this massive piece of equipment. If I'm EDCing, right. I'm not going to have that on the front end of my gun. It's like a mag light, you know, strapped gotta to the front of your gun. Got to be functional. Got to be comfortable. Yeah. And ha and can't be you know a basically what you've got can't be a deterrent to you actually wanting to carry every day. 100%. I, a lot of the times that I, I carried, I used to always want to be that EDC practitioner, but if I'm getting inside of my vehicle, I'm like, this is too uncomfortable, I'm putting it in my glove box, it's not an EDC functional tool. You have to make sure it's functional. Last piece to this is survival. Yes, this is a big lighter. Yes. I thought this was for a smoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is for when smokes later that, yeah. on. But it, it's cool, you can have that one. So the Front Runner makes this it's one. It's got a bottle opener It does as have well. a bottle opener. I That's why that. I like it. It's dual purpose, which we like utility and function in that. But it's got a bottle opener, but it's a lighter. What do the lighters mean? Lighters mean um, 
Exposure. Exposure to the elements is like one of the number one things that's gonna kill you in a survival situation. You get displaced from your vehicle in Arizona and you're in the middle of the desert and it drops 20, 30 degrees, guess what? Yeah. You're gonna die of hypothermia or exposure to the elements. So having this and the ability to start a fire is a good practice. Um, put these in your glove box, put these in your uh, center console, put these in your pockets, give them to your kids, don't let them smoke. <laughs> Philcraft survival, um, survival kit. This thing is four by six-ish. Fits in a purse, fits in a go bag, fits in your vehicle, your glove box, everywhere you want it to fit. Yep. It's gonna fit. Staples of survival, go check it out, philcraftsurvival.us. Hey, so one thing that you wanna consider is also ammo, right? Because if you're using different types of ammo for different purposes, I'm not gonna shoot a $1 serrated nylon, Teflon round at a piece of paper but I might use it in self-defense. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what I'm actually carrying in my magazines right now is uh, Hornady Critical Duty. And so uh, through different education processes and watching this ammunition and its performance, uh, it's a 135 grain uh, projectile. And basically this guy was built to go through glass and do some different things for, it was built for law enforcement, but built to do a certain thing where you could actually punch through car doors you could get through glass and it still had the ability to neutralize somebody if you needed to. So again, Hornady Critical Duty is what we're carrying. I recommend if you're looking at different ammunition types, make sure you educate yourself. Make sure you understand uh, what the penetration level of the actual projectile is. So the standard by the FBI is that that projectile has to go 12 inches or further to be able to be considered a lethal round. And so you wanna make sure that you educate yourself and understand what you're carrying in your pistol uh, that way you get max effect when you're defending yourself. Max penetration. Max penetration. <laughs> hey guys, watch, subscribe, and don't forget, stay alert, stay alive.